All right, so we're going to bend a uh, stub up in the four inch EMT conduit with the hydraulic bender. And when we look at the manual, or you can look on the connecting bar, and the deduct stub dimensions minimum distance from the end of the conduit. So the deduct for four inch conduit is 32 and a quarter inches. And the minimum stub length is 36 and a quarter. And the minimum distance from the end of the conduit was four, like we talked about, so it doesn't oblate the conduit. Here's the IMC and rigid dimensions. So 32 and a quarter. And we're going to bend a 38 inch stub up. So 38 inches minus the deduct of 32 and a quarter equals five and three quarters inches. So the mark, bending mark, will be at five and three quarters inches. And we'll set the conduit up, and then we'll go ahead and we'll bend it with the hydraulic bender. Um, know that this manual is in your Brightspace uh, website on uh, conduit bending raceways calculations. And uh, I've got the one for the mechanical bender and the smart bender as well on the Brightspace page in contents. Um, what you're looking at here is the unit, the hydraulic ram set up from the hydraulic pump and it got the connecting bars here and it sets inside this connecting the unit here on the, and here's the follow bar, and here's the shoe and there is a saddle that's on the unit and they're all around the unit. It's kind of nice. The mobile table has the shoes and the follow bars and the saddles mounted on the table so you can take it anywhere on the job site or in the shop or whatever and use the unit uh, for whatever you're bending. This saddle goes on to the front of the shoe. There's some things that, you, that are important. Um, this part of the shoe, it, the part, this, uh, part of the saddle, is going to be on the outside. It's not going to be on the inside. This part that sticks out of the saddle is going to be outside. Correct. And this is where, wherever I mark my pipe, that's going to go flush with the front of this. And making sure that the follow bar is butted up with the pipe in here, it would be butted up tight so let me to the saddle. That's good. When you got the conduit in there, you want to make sure I want it, the follow bar is up against the back of the saddle. I want it 90 degrees right here. Then, That's important. Then you're going to put this pipe retention device, you're going to put that in there and you're going to slide that in so that way everything's tight and the conduit's following along with the follow bar and it's not going to be at an angle. Now there's information on the side of the connecting bar here that they put on that's in the manual as well. So if you don't have the manual, you can find some of this information on there. Here is down here on the bottom. To locate the bending mark for a 90 degree bend for a required stub. And they've got EMT, IMC, and rigid. And they've got the measurement two and a half, three, three and a half, and four inch conduit. And then the minimum stub length is 36 and a quarter inches. The minimum distance from the end of the conduit is four. Or for three inch, it would be three. Or for two and a half, it would be two. The reason why they make the minimum distance from the end of the conduit is so that way the conduit doesn't get squashed or oblated. So you want to have as much as, as the diameter of the pipe sticking out from the end of the saddle from when you're going to bend it so that way it doesn't flatten the conduit down. And so that's why the minimum stub length is 36 and a half, 36 and a quarter, excuse me, and the deduct would be 32 and a quarter, 32 and a half. So that way the four inches is accounted for. So here we're going to be within the parameters. We're bending a 38 inch stub up. The minimum stub length was 36 and a quarter. So we're going to be fine. We're going to have a little bit more than the four inches sticking out when we do that measurement. 
The other side of this here is the RAM travel. And the RAM travel deals with the, on the RAM, you can see here that there's a indicator, measurements, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 14, 15 inches. And there's a little rubber thing that will probably wear out after a while, but you can use that to indicate where it is so that way when you're making the bend, it will tell you how much RAM travel you're going to need in order to make that bend. Now we can use a protractor, so that way when we're doing the bend, we can set that on there and we can see how much angle we've got and whatnot. And we have to take into account for spring back, the natural tendency of the conduit to flex back into its natural position. But the ram travel takes that into consideration. So we can double up on that, kind of check and say, oh, we're getting close to where the end of the bend is gonna be at. So ram travel on the connecting bar here, if we're bending the 90 degrees and we're in four inch EMT, the amount of ram travel would be nine and five eighths here. And we can also see in the manual for ram travel, that the uh, ram travel for 90 degree bend, four inch conduit is nine and five eighths. I kind of smudged it a bit, but it's nine and five eighths on that. And it's also on here. Here we have the pipe vise. And the pipe vise is gonna move back and forth. And so we're going to secure the conduit in this pipe vise and clamp it down so that way it moves and holds the conduit level and straight when we're doing the bend. This is the follow bar. And the follow bar has to be in the right position. And there is a An indicator, if you'll notice here, it says start on it. You want this part of the follow bar to be on the front side to where it's going to be up against the, the saddle on the shoe when we get ready to bend. If you don't have the follow bar in the right direction, it's not going to bend properly. So you want to make sure that you've got the follow bar in the right direction. Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters, yeah. Now, it's easier if I, if I just put these marks all the way around the pipe. That way, no matter how I put it in there, I'm gonna see where my, where my line needs to go. And take it into consideration that we're using the dry erase markers that you use on the whiteboard. If you're, if you're doing this and it's exposed conduit run, you probably want to use a graphite pencil. You want to use your carpenter's pencil or whatever. So that way you can kind of erase it and it doesn't show up as much. If you're using a Sharpie marker, it's going to be there permanent. So you want to make sure that you're going to be able to erase it if it's exposed or have to use a pencil. But the dry, dry erase marker works really nice. And uh, the Sharpie marker, if it's not exposed, it's up in the ceiling or it's way out of the way, then a Sharpie marker will work fine. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the follow bar is up against the back side of the saddle. So we're going to have to loosen that pressure up a little bit. And then we're going to slide the follow bar and make sure everything's aligned. OK, right there. And then I'll move the follow bar up. Got it? Yep. Good. Okay.
And we'll make sure it's lined up with the ball bar. Looks like it's okay. All right. Now, the ram travel was nine and five eighths for the 90 degree. So we'll put this at nine and five eighths. And we can start bending. Okay, now right there is 90 degrees, but we need to take into consideration spring back. The tendency of the material to turn to its natural state or its original position. And so we're going to have to take into account, usually with this conduit, it's going to be about 4 degrees, 3 degrees extra, making 93, 94 degrees, so that way when it relaxes back, it's at 90. You can see where we're almost at 9 and 5 eighths here on our ram travel. Zero. Be very close. Okay. So let's go ahead and bend this a few more degrees. Where are we at? About 90. We're about 94 right there. And the ramp travels close. It's close to nine and a half. Nine and five eighths. And if I was bending a bunch of these, I would just move this down so I knew exactly where it was and I wouldn't have to mess with that. Right. Click it forward. I can just go to the ramp travel. So let's relax this back just to where it's just relaxed off of the pressure, but it's not totally undone. There we go. And where are we at? About 90 degrees? It looks like it's 90 degrees. So we want an extra four degrees and it's at 90 now. So we can go ahead and let's go ahead and take that out. We'll not need to follow bar back. Okay, let's get through to the shoe. Okay. Not bad. Okay, so one of the things that we ran up against is that we had it rolling on us. We probably should lock the wheels so that way it doesn't roll back and forth when we're working on it. So that way it just makes things a little bit easier. I like to wear gloves when I'm working to protect my hands because these are the only hands I got. And you probably want to wear safety glasses as well. And make sure that you're cognizant of what each other's doing when you're working with somebody so that way somebody doesn't get hurt.